my alley. Listen, listen, listen. When I was preparing, I was like, Lord Jesus, what is it shall it be? And so let me go ahead and share with you the plethora of things that God has given me. Oh, Lord have mercy. So I wanted to, because I had not um, done the spiritual forecast, right? So as I was reviewing the forecast, um, it was just very evident that that was the foundation of, of the message. So instead of me doing the forecast and like we normally do separate from the message, it is, I want you to understand that what I'm sharing to you is coming from a lot of the different resources that we have, that we go to, to press in, because it's not, I don't know these things in and of myself. I'm a student right along with, with you all, right? And so I have to go to the Jewish resources, to those who are uh, the current voices in, um, you know, the messianic uh, faith that are also directly tied into, you know, um, the, the culture. So they know how to uh, read and how to share the season that we are in spiritually. So I am going to be sharing um, from that, but then I'm also going to be sharing from resources that I have from a school, you know, from um, a seminary, okay? as it speaks to the doctrine of revelation, I'm gonna be reading directly from that. And I'm also going to be integrating in part of the teaching that is very comprehensive that we've done here, that is uh, Armor 2.0. I'm going to be sharing in some things about the helmet of salvation, specifically speaking to the mind. So this here is, uh, this is a, it's a big word. It's a massive word. I want you all to get your, get your little bottles of water, whatever, your notebook and your pad, and let's get going, all right? So the month that we are in, the month that we are in is called the month of E-Y-A-R, E-Y-A-R, that is spelled I-Y-A-R, E-Y-A-R. All right, we are in the month of ER. This is actually, you know, y'all do understand that each month there's 12 months in the year and there's 12 tribes of Israel. Each month has a tribe that is assigned to it. It has uh, a constellation, okay, um, in the heavens. And it has uh, a stone and it has different characteristics, you know, and, and, and the tribes, they are actually linked. There are, um, I don't know how they're, they are, I don't know by heart how they're linked, but this is the Issachar, this is the month of Issachar, this is E-R, and Issachar is the second of three tribes in this three month section. So if you were to take the 12 tribes, divide them by four, okay, there would be not four by uh, three, there would be, oh, no, no, four, I was right. There would be uh, three tribes in each quarter. All right. So ER is the second of the third month in this quarter, in the first quarter of the year. All right. So this is the month of Issachar, and it bridges between April and May, our April and May, all right? So we are, uh, there's 29 days, sometimes there's 30, but usually there's 29 days in the month of ER, which is the, which represents the tribe of Issachar, all right? Now, before I go into what God is doing in this season. Uh, just for anyone that could be listening, uh, watching us on Facebook or YouTube, that may not be uh, kingdom oriented or even uh, have embraced the Jewish, the Hebrew foundation of our Christian faith. You may listen to what I'm saying 
And you may be thinking that I'm speaking about astrology or something like that. But we do understand that, you know, even when Christ was born, the, 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 the Lord gave, he says in Genesis, he gave, you know, the sun and the moon and the stars as signs and the seasons, you know, they, they encompass certain things are built into these seasons. So the, the wise men that came that found Christ were even able to, they knew that he was born and they were able to locate him because of following the seasons and the signs in the heavens that the Lord gave. All right. So there is a reason. There is a reason. Why do we seek to understand the will of God by including uh, discerning the natural seasons that we are in? Why? Because the natural world around us is his servant as well. So just like Holy Spirit <laughs> only does and what the father sends and says for Holy Spirit to do. And likewise, Christ only came to do the will of the father and to say and to do all the, they are servants to the triunity, to the leadership, to the prevailing idea and agenda from heavenly father. So just like their servants, the natural world around us are servants to God as well. But we do not worship nature. We don't worship the servant. We don't worship angels, okay? We do not worship nature. We only worship our father who has revealed himself in a triune nature. There is a Midrashic parable that sheds light on what I'm saying. And if, this is what it says. A king conquered a new province, the elite of which decided that they needed to forge connections with the new rulers. Some decided to become acquainted with the rulers, uh, the dukes, and others decided to become acquainted with the knights, and yet others with the ministers. The wisest among them declared, I will forge a connection with the king himself. He reasoned, all the ministers, knights and dukes change. However, the king will always remain king, right? So this parable just really emphasizes how some people attribute power to the constellations and that the celestial spheres or spheres have powers independent of God's will. Therefore, they serve them with their trust and faith. Oh, some people won't make a move until they read their, their, their uh, whatever their zodiac forecast is, right? They serve these servants with their trust and faith. However, Christ's followers, kingdom people, realize that Adonai God is the supreme power. And these are no more, the sun, the moon, the stars are no more than a manifestation of the divine will. What the seasons bring are no more than a manifestation of the divine will of God. They reveal God's will, but they do not set his will, okay? They rightly understand, kingdom people rightly understand that all other created powers are no more than obedient servants who carry out Adonai God's will. Ultimate power rests not with nature, but with the creator of nature, with the creator of heaven and earth. So for anyone that's listening to what we may be sharing, what I may be sharing, I really need you to understand the perspective, the position that we are coming from. So let us dig into what the Lord has already revealed about the season we are in and see if he will reveal some things still hidden. Uh-huh. Some things are evident 
and we can learn, but we are prophetic people. There's some things that are still hidden, right? And we want to see what God will speak to us. We may not hear it today, but I anticipate you will hear from him over the weeks to come as you discern the season that you're in. Listen, according to Proverbs 25, 2, the ESV version says, it is the glory of God. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings is to search things out. I don't know if you saw my post. I love um, how God gave me the, uh, the idea. And so the picture that I put on there is the two crowns. You have the crown of thorns and you have the crown that a king, a, an earthly king would wear, right? And so I just see this as the glory of God to conceal a thing is, the, is Jesus with the crown of thorns. People didn't receive him as king of kings and lord of lords. He was a king concealed under the crown of thorns, but the glory of kings, okay, the earthly kings, we who are kings and priests and, and in actual real kings, kings, the glory of kings is to search these things out that God has revealed. So we're going to search out the mind of Christ. We're going to search out the mind of God as it relates to those things that God has concealed. It is to our glory. God has given us that opportunity. And so basically what my idea and my desire is, is that we will cultivate an Issachar anointing. This anointing, this Issachar anointing, I believe is available to all kingdom people, but not everybody wants it. Not everybody understands it. Not everybody desires it. And, and, the, and therefore, not everybody cultivates it. But I pray that we will cultivate an Issachar anointing so that we will have the wisdom Hallelujah, that the woman of God prophesied that God has already desired for us to have so that we can walk in the wealth, the wealth of relationships, the wealth of health, the wealth of finances, the wealth of, of ideas, the wealth, the wealth, the wealth of anointing and giftings and talents and call, the wealth of the kingdom that the Lord has already ordained for us to have, right? Okay, so today is actually the 21st. I know you're going to be like, well, Apostle, it's not the first. No, I'm sorry. This is actually the 21st of ER. Uh -huh. And the last day of the month of ER is next Monday. Then we will go into the month of Savan. So I did neglect, I did neglect, I did neglect to uh, uh, bring this forward to you three weeks ago, but God's timing is perfect. He's letting us know that we are still in the season. So you take what you learned today and you implement, you, you pray into it, you press into it and you go ahead and you receive all of what is in the season for you to receive. Now the alphabet for this season, for ER, the, the name ER is Vav, Vav. This is Hebrew, this is Hebrew. Okay. And so the letter is called Vav. V, A, V. I want you to picture a V and then an A, which is an inverted or, or you know, y'all know how the triangle is. And then, and then another V, it's, it's down, right? You know what? This alphabet, this alphabet points to, it points to, it means connection, linking, linking. So in this month, the alphabet, for ER pointing to connection, linking, all right? We've already established that the tribe for the month of ER is Issachar, Issachar. And so this tells us that this is the month to understand secrets. Mm -hmm. Hence Proverbs 25 too. It is the glory of God to keep a secret, but it's the glory of us to be able to be invited into the Lord's space for him to reveal the secrets to us. Ah, that's our glory. The characteristics for the month, okay? This month is marked by natural healing, all right? Natural healing manifests Dealing with processing thoughts, we're going to talk about that. Dealing with the conscience of the soul, speaking specifically to soul work, okay? 
and receiving spiritual advice. This is the time to contemplate um, numbers, whether they come by a dream, a vision, or divine revelation. The constellation uh, that is prominent in this month is Taurus. Oh, listen, honey, you're going to get so much confirmation. Evangelist Sean, you're going to get so much confirmation. <laughs> it's Taurus is the constellation, Taurus the bull, all right? So this is uh, speaking to uh, looking and observing to find a place of strength. Look to find a place of strength. It also represents uh, a time to fight against empires and cultures. This is the season where the bull, the strength of, 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 of the lion of the tribe of Judah, you know what I'm saying? The strength of the, 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 the bull, the spiritual strength of the ox, a bull is present. So you wanna find that place of strength. You wanna lean into those areas of strength in your gifting. All right, and use that to fight against empires and cultures. Let God speak to you as it relates to what that means for you specifically. And the stone um, is, uh, the color is royal blue, blue lapis. But I also, when I was um, investigating, uh, another one, another resource had said that it was uh, opal. So I don't know if it means it's blue opal, but in any case, it really represents not a solid color, but a rainbow of colors. So when you look at the lapis stone, it is a blue, but it's not a solid blue. It's like a rainbow of colors. And when you look at the opal, there's a rainbow of colors. Now, Iyar is the second of the 12 months of the Jewish calendar. In the Bible, the month of ER is often called the month of Ziv, meaning radiance. Ooh. So this month is a month of radiance, radiance. This month is commonly referred to as the month of natural healing, the month of healing across the board, but specifically natural healing okay so this is the month where healing is just like built in when i think about seasons it's not that in the, any other time you can't receive natural healing but i just believe that when something is in season that's when there is an abundance of it's easier to access you don't have to pay a higher price you know like when you buy fruit in season it's cheaper than when you try to purchase it out of season it's not that it's not available right and so this is a month, okay, the month of natural healing. Its name is an acronym for, to, listen, I don't know much about the Hebrew, the Hebrew language, but I know that it is powerful when it comes down to even each letter is a pictogram, each letter, not like our letters, letter A don't mean nothing but the letter A, the letter B is B. But in the Hebrew, each letter has a whole series of meanings. And then when you put the letters together to make a word, it's just a compound meaning and picture from God. So this month that is uh, referred to natural healing, the acronym for the name ER actually means, it's actually an acronym for one of the names of God, which is I am God, your healer. I am God, your healer. So, so that's why when you see ER, it's, it leans right into the, the healer is, is with us. And this is the month that he really comes forward as a healer. Exodus chapter 15, verse 26 is where we see I am God, your healer. 
ER is associated with the tribe of Issachar. I'm going to get more into that healing part in a minute. Issachar, uh, ER is associated with the tribe of Issachar, which is known for its anointing to understand the times and to understand secrets. Understand the times, understand secrets. This month is linked with light, radiance, okay? Which signifies increased revelation. Mm -hmm. Increased revelation. Light is opposite of darkness. If darkness tries to overtake you this month, say, no, I am increasing in revelation. Mm -hmm. Isaiah 60 says that the glory can be seen on you and radiates off of you. So this is the month you need to light up with his glory. Mm, come on, y'all. To understand ER, we can look at what happened to Israel coming out of Egypt. Nisan, the first month of the Jewish calendar year, all right, which is the month we just came out of before ER, Nisan was the month of leaving Egypt. That's when the children of God left Egypt. And Sivan, which is the month after ER, the third month was the month that they arrived in Sinai and Torah was given. So ER is a month, is considered in the spirit, is a month of transition, which pictures the journey from Egypt to Mount Sinai. Now we know it, didn't, it took them more than a month to get there. We understand that, but it does not still change the fact that the month when they left Egypt was, was um, Nisan and the month that they arrived was the, arrived in Canaan was the month Sivan. So this month, the month of connection, the month of linking is considered a month of transition, which pictures the journey from Egypt to Mount Sinai. That very important transition involved much more than a geographical change. God's people were transitioning to a new level in their relationship with him. Come on, y'all. During this time, God began to reveal his covenant secrets to them. When I read that, I was like, wow, to me, you know, change management is a whole discipline. There are people that get certification, leaders, executives that get certification in change management, in helping an organization, helping a business, helping uh, 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 some kind of an organization to manage change, to manage a reset, to manage a shift, to manage transition so that they do not lose a lot of employees, they don't lose a lot of customers, they don't lose a lot of revenue. There's something about change management. And so during this time of transition of change, God began to reveal his covenant secrets to them. You know what I believe that is? That is the change management of God. I believe that it is one of the ways that he helps us to manage change by continuing to send us a word, instructions, guidance, correction, all of the things that we need to manage that change. So I believe that this month of Issachar, this time, we, this is a time of radiance, a time of revelation. God is going to be uh, uh, speaking to you more about some things. You really need to take it very serious, the things that God shares. When Israel passed out of Egypt, they knew they were God's people, but they didn't know much about God. Mm. They knew they were God's people, but they didn't know much about God. I don't know who is listening that may know that you're God's, that God has a claim on your life. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, where would you be? Because may, maybe the way you were raised or what you've just seen, the clear signs of God, but maybe you don't really know much about God. 
himself. Mm. That was how it was for Israel. I want you to be encouraged that God is not upset. He just invites you to get to know him more personally, experience him personally for yourself. But this was their situation. They had no Bible. How were they going to know him? See, we have the word of God. We know him because we can hear his voice. We know his heart, the way he thinks, the way he moves, his ways his desires, his plans. So it helps us to get to really know the person, right? Well, they didn't have a Bible. They had no Bible. All they had were the stories. They had the oral uh -huh, accounts and stories that were passed down to them through the generations about how God, you know, appeared to Abraham. But they had lived as slaves in Egypt and knew about the Egyptian gods. They knew more about the Egyptian gods than they did about their own God. They didn't know much about the God that had rescued them from captivity. So God, what does he do? He put them into his covenant school to teach them his nature. Mm -hmm. This school was not conducted in a classroom, but in the life and death realities of the wilderness. When Moses led Israel through the Red Sea, they traveled into the desert for three days without finding water. Finally, they came to the oasis of Marah. Marah meaning bitter. But the water was too bitter to drink. An oasis that's bitter? Come on, I don't know. If, I've had some so-called oasis in my life where they were bitter, but as far as God was concerned, they were oasis. They were designed to be a place of rest and restoration. So here they come to this oasis of Marah, but the water was too bitter to drink. Two million people in the middle of the wilderness with no water to drink created a serious situation. But look at God's idea. Look at God's idea about this. This is what you were talking about, Evangelist Sean, as far as the perspective, okay? Seeing things through this, a certain perspective. God's idea was to bless them. The people grumbled against Moses saying, what are we to drink? All right, they're at this oasis. What are we to drink? Uh -huh. I mean, you have an oasis in the desert, in the wilderness, trees and stuff the appearance of water, but they can't drink it. It's like, what's going on here? Moses cried out to the Lord and the Lord showed him a piece of wood. There's so many things I could talk about here. Wood symbolizes so many things, but we do know the tree that cross hung on, okay, is the main symbolism. So the Lord showed him a piece of wood. God was saying, Moses, let me tell you a secret. This is the month of Issachar, y'all. Let me tell you a secret. I can heal bitter water. See that piece of wood? Put it in the water and see what happens. What did Moses do? Moses threw the wood into the water, uh, and the water, the water was healed. The water was healed. God demonstrated his power to change their situation by healing the bitter water. But then God said in Exodus 15, 26, huh? oh. and Moses, I not only heal water, I heal people. <laughs> In that context, God gave his people a key covenant promise, a key covenant promise. And this is what it is, y'all. Make note of this, Exodus 15, 26. This is the promise. If you listen to my voice, I will keep you well for I am the Lord who heals you. 
See, the promise, the promise is not that he will heal you just simply because, but if you listen to my voice, I will keep you well. I am the Lord who heals you. So during the month of ER, God revealed one of his most important covenant names, Yahweh Rapha. But then in Exodus 16, we see Israel grumbled again. This time they had run out of food. God said to Moses, I have heard Israel's grumbling. Tell them at twilight, you will eat meat. And in the morning, you will be filled with bread. Then you will know that I am the Lord, your God. Exodus 16, 12. That evening, quail came and covered the camp. And in the morning, God sent manna. So here, God reveals another covenant secret by showing them that he is Yahweh Jireh, the Lord who sees and provides, the Lord who sees to it that you will be provided for, Yahweh Jireh. And then when we get into Exodus 17, Israel was attacked by the Amalekites. Moses went to the top of the hill and raised his hands, right? The staff, he raised his staff in his hands. And as long as his hands were raised, as long as the staff was raised, they won. But when he put his hands down, they lost. So Aaron and her helped Moses keep his hands up and they won the battle. In that context, they learned that praise is a key to victory. So here God has revealed another aspect of his covenant, another secret uh, aspect of who he is. And he revealed that he is Yahweh Nisi, the Lord, my banner. So in ER, God revealed his covenant secrets. He is our healer. He is our provider. He is our banner of victory over every enemy. Question, do you begin or are you beginning to get a feel for for what God wants to do in your life as you move through each year with him month by month? I want y'all to start really considering that, pressing into doing your own individual study and, and, and keeping up with it for yourself and, and really identifying the seasons, the spiritual seasons that you're in. God, we see here, just from Nissan to ER to now Savan next month, God is showing us how he wants uh, uh, you to reconfirm your covenant at Passover in the first month, all right, because Passover Passover was in the first month, the month of Nisan. Why? So that he can begin to reveal the secrets of his covenant in the second month and then bring you into a whole new level of Pentecost in the third month. Mm, Yes, Pentecost. How do we learn God's covenant secrets? God reveals his secrets to those who seek him. Bottom line. That's why our scripture, Proverbs 25, 2, it is the glory of God to conceal things, but the glory of kings to search things out. God reveals his secrets to those who seek him. God is a revealer. He is a revealer. He will strip in front of you. Mm, He is a revealer. Daniel 2, verses 21 and 22 reminds us that He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals deep and secret things. Matthew 13, 11, NASB tells us to you, to you, he's talking about us, y'all. 
This is Jesus talking to his disciples. To you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But to them, it has not been given. That's why he spoke in parables, okay? And he anointed us. He anointed us, blessed us with this permission, with the keys to the kingdom. To you, it has been granted to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. But it just doesn't come automatically. God wants us to seek. He wants us to ask. James 1.5 tells us, if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God and it will be given to him. In, in the month of Iyar, God will give an extra blessing to those who set their hearts on seeking him by revealing the secrets of his covenant. So ask him to reveal his secrets this month. Let God reveal his covenant to you at a new level of reality so you can walk in his blessing all year. See me, y'all know I'm reading. I don't want it just in the month of ER. And I don't believe God is saying it's only available. I want this always. I've been claiming this in prayer, making the declaration and the confession of faith that we have. We are people that are not just prophetic, but we have an Issachar anointing. So it's one thing to be prophetic where God speaks, you know, and gives us prophetic word and we flow in the spirit of prophecy. But it's another thing to be like the wise men. Uh, that can discern the seasons and the times. We want that. We want that part as well. Okay. But we don't only want it when it is a general anointing and availability to the body of Christ, where it's this, uh, a, a gift that just comes upon us because of the season that we're in. But we want to walk in that always. We want to cultivate an Issachar anointing so that we can walk in his blessing all year long. I don't know about y'all, but I want it all year long. The blessing of his revelation all year long. Revelation is important. It's important. Matter of fact, let's look at Revelation. Let's, I'm gonna share with you some teaching on revelation. Let's first look at the definition of revelation. The Greek word for revelation is apocalypsis. Apocalypsis. Apocalypsis, okay? A P O K A L U P S I S means an uncovering to uncover or unveil. So this is God who disrobes himself, allows us to see aspects of himself. Mm -hmm. It best represents this word, apakula, ap, ap, apuk, <laughs> whatever. The way we say it is apocalypsis, but I've tried to pronounce it the way it's supposed to be. It best represents what is meant, this word best represents what is actually meant by revelation. So you would want to study out this word, the definition, because it best represents what is meant by revelation. Most dictionaries define revelation as a disclosure or unveiling to make known something hidden or secret. It is used in this sense in scripture. In theology, revelation refers to God unveiling himself to man and communicating truth. God communicating truth to the mind of man, which he could not discover in any other way. Okay, how much you try? This that comes by revelation can only be received by God communicating this truth to your mind. 
It is imparted truth, which could not be discovered by natural reasoning alone. We need an impartation of your truth, Lord God. Mm -mm -mm. Matthew eleven twenty seven says, no man knoweth the son save the father. Neither knoweth any man the father save the son and he to whomsoever the son will reveal him. Uh, save is just a fancy word for accept. All right. So the only way we know the father is only through Jesus who decides who he, re he will reveal the father to. Matthew 16, 7, blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed this unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. And 1 Corinthians 2, 10, but God hath revealed them unto us by his spirit. You can also read Amos 3, 7, 1 Samuel 3 and 21, Daniel 2, 19 through uh, 30, and then verse 47. And Deuteronomy 29 and 29, 1 Peter 4, 13, and Luke 2 and 26. Evangelist Sean, I want you to get for me Ephesians chapter 4, verse 17. I want you to read in a moment. I want you to read verse 17 through 24. And I want you to read from the complete Jewish Bible version. So I know you can get that on your electronic Bible. That's Ephesians chapter 4. Verse 17 through 24, complete Jewish Bible, the CJB version. Now let's look at the necessity of revelation, the necessity. So we defined it. Now there's a very reason why. And we, we're, we know, y'all mature. So I know you understand, but we're going to reiterate some things for those who may be listening out there that may not understand. This may just shore up your understanding. But the, the need of revelation, here is what the, um, the, the doctrine teaches us. Man being made in the image and likeness of God has within himself certain faculties which enable him to receive revelation from God. These faculties set man apart from the irrational creatures made by God. Man is superior to animals in that he is endowed with a will, intelligence, conscience, and a spirit which can know and worship God. These are these faculties that he's speaking of. However, when man fell, so did these faculties. Mm -hmm. His will fell, his intelligence, his conscience, and his spirit. Though he partook of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, he fell into a state of spiritual ignorance and darkness. In the fall, Man became totally depraved, uh -huh. depraved meaning immoral or wicked, morally corrupt. Uh -huh. Man became totally depraved in spirit, soul, and body. His mind, reason, and understanding became darkened. He was alienated from the life of God and became an enemy of God in his mind by wicked works. And we see this in Ephesians chapter four, verses 17 through 24. Sean, Evangelist Sean, please read this account of scripture. Evangelist Sean, are you there? Yeah, I was trying to find the mute. <laughs> oh, <laughs> say the scripture again one more Ephesians time. Ephesians 4, verses 17 through 24, the CJB version. CJV. The complete Jewish Bible. Ephesians 4. 
happiness. This speaks to our need, the necessity of God to impart his See. truth to our mind. See, because mm -hmm. 17 through 24. Yep. Yeah. Okay, here it is. Therefore, I say this indeed, in union with the Lord, I insist on it. Do not live any longer as pagans live with this, their sterile ways of thinking. Their intelligence has been shrouded in darkness and they are estranged from the life of God because of the ignorance in them, which in turn comes from resisting God's will. They have lost all feeling. So they have abandoned themselves to sensuality, practicing any kind of impurity and always greedy for more. But this is not the lesson you've learned from the Messiah. If you really listen to him and were instructed about him, then you learned that since what is in Yeshua is truth. Mm -hmm. Then so far as your former way of life is concerned, you must strip off your old nature because your old nature is thoroughly rotted by its deceptive desires. And you must let your spirits and minds keep being renewed mm. and clothe yourselves with the new nature cre created to be godly, which expresses itself in the, I'm sorry, in the righteousness and holiness that flow from the truth. Come on. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you, woman of God. Yes. My goodness. Amen. Mm -mm -mm. Thank you so much for reading that. So there's a definite need for revelation. There's a definite need for continual renewal of the truth of God being imparted him gifting us with revelation to continue to renew us and to reset our mind, to, to, to elevate us and to, to lift us up out of all of those dark places, out of a fallen mindset, fallen beliefs, fallen just the, the air, because our soul's been saved. So our soul, we don't have to worry, you know, we don't have to, well, our spirit man has been regenerated. We are daily working out our soul salvation and continually he wants to lift up those fallen areas, those areas that we have given over to fallen thinking. Um, and so we cannot uh, just love this passage of scripture here. It really, really points to um, um, the continual work that we need to do. But again, 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 when man fell, these faculties fell. They're just not automatically lifted up and restored in their function when we give our life to the Lord. This is that daily work that we have to do in our mind, in our heart, in our soul, okay? Uh, and so fallen, you know, our mind, uh, his mind, reason, and understanding become dark and he was alienated from the life of God and became an en enemy of God in his mind by wicked works. But we thank God for salvation, that we are no longer an enemy of God, but we are brought in and we are, the righteousness of Christ has been imputed on us. And so we have that place. But now that we are in the light of God, we need to bring all those other areas in as well. So this radiance, this month of radiance, this month of revelation of light, God can send this revelation to us. He can release his, these secrets to us and heal us, heal us, heal us in our thinking, heal us in our beliefs, heal us all the way, body, soul, and spirit. The need for revelation continues and says, the fact that man is created but but fall is a created but fallen being indicates his need of a revelation of God. Okay, this points back to what I was saying, how the people knew that they were gods, 
uh, um, belong to God, but they didn't know this God that they belong to. They need, and they know that they're, we know that we're made in the image and likeness of God, but unless we understand what his image and likeness is, then we don't know who we are. So this, 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 this indicates, uh, uh huh. The fallen being indicates his need of a revelation of God. Unless God takes the initiative and reveals himself to man, it is impossible for man to discover or know God. Zophar said to Job in Job 11, 7, canst thou by searching find out the almighty unto perfection? Mm. Paul declared that the world with all its wisdom could not know God. First Corinthians 12, uh, 1 and 21. And that no man could know the things of God without the spirit of God revealing it to him. First Corinthians 2, 11 through 16. Okay. Now there's so much more that um, my studies show, but I'm gonna fast forward and go to the revelation of God in personal experience. This is very, very important. Mm -hmm. The fact that God has given a revelation of himself indicates that he intended man to receive it. Man being made in the image and likeness of God has been given mental and spiritual capacity to receive revelation from his creator. However, the intellectual and spiritual parts of man's being have to come under the illuminating influence of the Holy Spirit in order to be able to receive revelation of God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 12. Mm -hmm. let, let's, let, let me share a little bit before I finish up this on the mind. Now I'm going to share with you part of the teaching that the Lord has given us for the helmet of salvation for Armor 2.0. I have 26 pages of notes just on the helmet of salvation. I'm only going to share one with you. The part that speaks to the mind. The mind is the control center. The control center of, of, of your whole being. That's why it's so important that we be renewed in the spirit of our mind, that our mind would humble itself, that it would come under, okay, how we said here, the intellectual and spiritual part of man's being has to come under the illuminating influence of the Holy Spirit in order to be able to receive the revelation of God. So you have to purpose your mind to serve the Lord, to submit to the Spirit of God, right? So your mind, it is the control center, but it has to relinquish its control. It has to submit it to God. Your mind, I need you to understand, your mind is not your, your brain, okay? Brain is one thing, that's the matter. That's the stuff that they can cut on and remove. The mind is, is something you can't see, all right? It is a spirit. It's the spirit that the, that the brain, uh, 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 <sighs> Just like our body houses our soul and our spirit, the brain, it houses our mind. It, it is the temple of our mind. So your mind and its mental set, okay, is with you everywhere you go. You arrive into each moment of your life with the complete collection of all your beliefs, your beliefs about God, 
your beliefs about yourself, your beliefs about other people and life in general. You arrive at each moment of your life with this mental set, this collection of beliefs. You also arrive uh, into every moment with your habituated ways of thinking about what is happening. Mm -hmm. This collection of beliefs and thinking habits is called your mental set. And you cannot leave home without it. You can't. <laughs> Therefore, no matter how much you believe or wish that you do, you do not experience life in an unbiased manner. But rather, you experience life based on, on the basis of how your mental set is constructed and organize. Hey, we were born in sin and constructed shape in iniquity, iniquitous thoughts, and so on and so forth. All right. I know you believe, you wish that you were unbiased. You wish that you didn't have prejudices. You wish that you didn't. Listen, but it is impossible. That's why you got to do the work of resetting, reorganizing, renewing your mind, having the mind of Christ so that you combat those biases, those prejudices, those things, that habituated way of thinking that causes you so much conflict in your soul, in your emotions, in your mind, that has you depressed, anxious, panic attacks, uh, whatever it is. I'm, I'm getting off track. Let me continue. That is why mental set, mental set, this is why mental set renewal and growth is what we should pursue most of all. Because it is the control center. Your mind is your control center and it's going to delegate everything else. It's going to manage every other aspect of your life. Yes, 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 honey. Dr. Johnson, she, she already, yes, you had to talk to Dr. Johnson about that. We're working on that. Let's consider how beliefs work. It's your belief system. It's your belief system. All right. A belief is something you just take for granted. I need you, I need you to understand that. A belief is something that you just take for granted, usually without even thinking about it. We don't think about our beliefs. We just believe what we believe. We used to just take it for granted. Take your belief in gravity, for example. You take gravity for granted without thinking twice about it. When you got up this morning, did you question your belief in gravity and wonder if it would hold true for the whole day? No, of course not. When we believe something, we tend to not think critically about it. We might think about it, but we don't really challenge it because we believe it. We usually uh, uh, do the, the opposite of thinking critically. We, we tend to automatically defend our beliefs when they are challenged. Come on, y'all. Come on, think about it. We automatically defend our beliefs when they are challenged. Many of your life's experiences have left you with a complex collection of beliefs, which are just taken for granted, unchallenged, and possibly even unrecognized. I'll use myself as an example. 
Before I met Prophet Jerry, I had been previously married and divorced. It was not a good marriage and there was a lot of hurt and shame attached to it. The Lord revealed the reason why I was even in this bad marriage. He revealed that it was because of my mental set, the mental set that I had before I married this man. Remember, the mental set is the com complete collection of all of your beliefs. I had been sexually uh, 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 victimized and my mental set was broken and unrenewed. My belief was I, I'm really unworthy of a marriage where I am honored and adored. That was my belief. I am really unworthy of a marriage where I'm honored and adored. So I was convinced that this was true. And my beliefs created and shaped my emotional energy. I had no revelation of Christ or of myself in him. Okay. Does it mean I had not been in church? No, I was just like the children of Israel. I knew I belonged to God. You know, I knew of God, knew of the great exploits and stuff. But I didn't know him. I didn't have a revelation of him. I had no revelation of his image in me. So, you know, I, all I really had was this unrenewed, broken mental set. And since I was convinced, this shaped my emotional energy. You know, I've come to understand that emotions to me are, if you take the word emotions, you take the letter E and you put a dash between the E and the M, I see it as energy in motion. It's just energy. It's energy in motion. And it will take on the shape of what contain, whatever container you put it in. Just like putting water in a green Coke bottle. The water, it's, it's fluid. It'll go anywhere. But now it's shaped like the Coke bottle and it's green. You know what I'm saying? And so here... You know, I, these, these, the, these beliefs shaped my emotional energy. I carried myself as a woman of low self-worth, a woman of shame, was depressed, anxious, all kinds of issues. Therefore, what happens in my first marriage? I attracted a man with a spirit that needed to exploit my spirit. Hmm. He needed to exploit my spirit. I'm not going to get into all the things that happened, you know, who he was or whatever, but I understand the spirit's in operation. In him, I, I attracted a man that needed to leverage and exploit my spirit. So your, your mental set is the sum total of all of the habituated, entrenched beliefs and thought patterns that you use daily to make your decisions. All of the things you are convinced of is a part of your mental set. And this mental set acts as a kind of filter. It's a filter, y'all. Messages from other people that agree with your beliefs, oh, they're easily accepted. But messages that are not consistent with your thoughts and beliefs, they are rejected or not taken seriously. They have to fight to come in and take root. Mm -hmm. But not only do your beliefs shape your emotional, mental, and spiritual energy, they also influence and drive your behavior. All the ways that you act all of the time are in line with, agree with your mental set. So guess what? In other words, you tend to stay in character. You tend to stay in character. So time out for saying, oh, that wasn't me. Oh, that was out of character. Oh, no, 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 no. It is your character. You stay in character. So if you find yourself behaving, speaking, and doing things that you find that you need to, you know, 
ask forgiveness for, oh, that was out of character, da, da, da. then you need to go in and you need to deal with, uh huh, do the work, the soul work, because your mind is a part of your soul. You need to do the work in renewing your mind. I mean, psychologist tells us it's impossible for a person to maintain a behavior that they do not agree with. Sure, you know, sometimes you listen, I've seen it where people have tried to rush people, rush people to the altar, rush people into, into different kind of uh, uh, relationship scenarios, typically because they are trying to maintain a, a behavior, a character that's unnatural for them. And, they, and it's very, and it's difficult for them. And, and, and because, listen, they're trying to hurry up and get something settled because they don't know how long they can hold their breath and hold their tummy in. You know what I'm saying? It's they're, they're the true nature of themselves are going to come out. It's impossible. Behavior and thinking stays congruent, stays parallel. You may be able to deviate a little bit for a moment, but you're going to come back in line with your mind, with your mind. Okay. Yeah. Come on. Yes, woman of God. Thank you for letting us know. If you believe you are a work that you are worthless, then your behavior will demonstrate that belief. But if you believe that you are capable, then you will express that in your behavior. 1 Corinthians 13, 11 says, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I became capable. I put away childish things. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Are you a child in your mind? We have to raise your mind up. Have to renew your mind, put on the mind of Christ so you can put away childish things, so you can become capable. Your thinking must be renewed and grow up into the things of God so that your sonship will be manifested. Your mental set equals your behavior. Mental set equals your behavior. And, and, and it also influences your faith. It influences and informs your faith. It will influence your faith. Psychologist tells us that this system of having a mind and mental set, so on and so forth, this system is standard equipment for human beings. We defend the beliefs of our mental sets, even if they are illogical. We behave in ways which confirm these beliefs in ways that will actually provide the evidence for them. Your mental set can be a prison when it is not renewed. It, is, it will put you in bondage because it is so convincing when, when, when we actually go out and set up the situations to prove that our beliefs are based in reality. We convince ourselves, we're, we already think a certain way, believe a certain way. So now our behaviors will now cause us to go out and set up situations that will just in turn prove that our beliefs are based in reality. And then there you are. <laughs> there you are in this cycle in this cycle, we endeavor, we endeavor to create the evidence to fit the, the belief. That's what psychologists teach us. We endeavor daily. And we see that as kingdom people. I, I mean, when your mind is renewed, your belief is healthy and righteous and right, then you are daily setting out and pursuing and doing those things in the kingdom for God with God that are going to uh -huh, create the evidence that fits that belief. 
So we see it happening on the positive side, but in the same way it happens in the negative. Hmm. Woo, I just believe that uh, the greatest renewals happen as a result of revelation imparted from God. That's, that's, that was the whole purpose of me inserting this snippet of a very comprehensive teaching on the helmet of salvation on the mind. That the greatest renewal happens as a result of revelation. When God just gives us, when he, when he reveals, when he imparts a truth to us. <laughs> Listen. <sighs> there's a scripture. Oh, there's a scripture. It's so, 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 so good. I need someone to get Luke 24, verse 44 and 45, and someone to get John chapter 20, verse 22. Oh my goodness. The Lord Jesus, hmm. the Lord Jesus opened. When I read this, I this to me was the best part. This to me is the best part of the whole message, of the whole teaching today. The Lord, not, I mean, I've read this before, but it did not resonate the way that it resonates with me doing this teaching on how the greatest renewals happen as a result of revelation imparted from God. Luke 24, verses 44 through 45. Here, the Lord Jesus opened, opened the understanding of the disciples and also breathe now this one here i love this one this one i've always i it's on my staff i'm i'm having a staff custom god has blessed me and and commissioned a staff to be made that speaks to my mantle my anointing and one of the scriptures that is on there one of the key scriptures that he gave me is john chapter 20 verse 22 but we see in Luke 24, 40 through 45, the Lord Jesus opened the understanding of the disciples. And in John 20, 22, he breathed. He also not only opened, but breathed the, his spirit into their spirits, quickening their mental and spiritual capacity for knowing God. That's why I said today, come expecting an impartation because this is what we are believing God to do because I'm going to pray over y'all when I'm done with this, this message. And we're going to receive this, that God is going to increase. He's opening up the chasms of our mind. Oh, hey, Shonda, you know about say? the chasms of our mind and blowing life into it. Come on through here, Dr. Johnson, and read Luke 24, 44 through 45, um, and tell us how the Lord Jesus opened the understanding of the disciples. And he said unto them, these are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then open he their understanding mm. that they might understand the scriptures. Come on. Woo so we understand the scriptures. We understand the word of God, not to only be the scriptures. Okay but the revelation that he will impart to us by his spirit as we read the words of life. His understanding, his thoughts and intents when he sent that word, when he, when he 
perform that exploit, whatever that scripture is speaking of, he opened their understanding to the scriptures. Uh huh. And then John 20, verse 22. Somebody read, somebody read to us about how the Lord breathed his spirit into their spirits, thereby quickening their mental and spiritual capacity for knowing God. Glory to God. After saying this, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Mm, mm, mm. listen 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 the holy spirit is speaking the spirit of christ is speaking to us today and we are believing that he's breathing on us right now and will continue to breathe on our minds Woo! listen 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 the purpose the purpose of all the revelation of god is that man may come to know God in a personal way. Yes, there's the revelation of God in prophecy. Uh -huh. There's the revelation of God in Christ. Uh -huh. there's, there's the revelation of God in miracles, the revelation of God in history, the revelation of God, hallelujah, in nature. There's the revelation, but all of this is to help us to know God personally in a personal way it is not enough for man to say they know god in nature know god in conscience know god in history miracles or prophecy man must come to know god in an experiential way from the fall of man unto this day there have been millions of people who have known god in a personal way myself included we see in scripture, we see in the Old Testament how Enoch walked with God, Genesis 5. Noah walked with God, Genesis 6. God revealed himself to Abraham, Genesis 12. Isaac knew God, Genesis 26. Jacob had personal dealings with God, Genesis 28. The beloved son Joseph had revelation of God, Genesis 37. God revealed himself to Moses in the burning bush, Exodus 3. Joshua met the Lord as the captain of the host, Joshua 1 and Joshua 5. Gideon had a visitation from God, Judges 6. The Lord revealed himself to Samuel in a vision, 1 Samuel 3. David had a personal experience with the Lord, 1 Samuel 23. Elisha knew God in a still small voice, 1 Kings 17. Isaiah had a revelation of the holiness of God, Isaiah 6. In the New Testament, the 12 apostles received a personal experience of God in Christ, John chapter 4. Jesus is the revelation of God to man personally, Matthew 11 and 16. Paul had a personal revelation of Christ Jesus, Acts 9 and 18. The beloved apostle John knew Jesus experientially, John chapter 13, 1 John 4 and Revelation the whole book. Much of the revelation in the Old Testament and the New Testament was drawn from the personal experience of the saints. It arose out of the revelation of God to them, in them, and then through them. The transforming power of the gospel today in the lives of sinners is abundant, is abundant testimony to the re revelation of God, the need of the revelation of God in a very personal way. Mm -hmm. My God, I believe again, the greatest renewals happen as a result of revelation imparted from God. Uh -huh. So we should have, as I finish up now, the uh, forecast, continuing with the forecast. We should have the foundation to receive the anointing by the second month. Because mm -hmm. see, the first month was the, the Passover, okay? If we honored and received 
what the Lord did for us in that season. Now we have the foundation to receive the anointing that's being released in the month of ER. Mm -hmm. The full expression of God's blessing begins in the seventh month. But by this month, you should have obtained the anointing to receive from him what you ask. I believe to receive what you ask is to know what to ask. And the only way you can know what to ask is to be able to discern the times and the seasons, what the will of God is as he reveals it in that season. So we, we have because we ask correctly. Mm -hmm. So by this month, we should have obtained the anointing to receive from him what we ask. The month of Yar is associated with the Hebrew letter Vav, which pictures connection and linking. That's literally what the pictogram or the letter means. The letter Vav is actually a connecting pin. So if you move right in this month, the rest of the year connects properly. Issachar is the connecting tribe between Judah, which was the tribe in Nisan, and Zebulon, which is the tribe in Sivan, okay? Judah, the tribe of praise, uh, Zebulon, the business, they really rep represent business and industry. You need to see how you are to connect this month so you can determine your course during the year. There are certain time frames within which you need to respond in order to see how to advance forward into the next season. The Vav month, E-R, links the month of redemption with the next month, which is the month of giving. Uh, redemption was one that we just came out of, giving is the one we are going into. Your praise for coming out will begin to link with continued praise until that offering is presented at Pentecost. This assures multiplication. Your prosperity is linked with how you react in this month. The constellation associated again with this month is Taurus the bull. So to the Hebrews, the bull was the symbol of strength. The con this constellation reminds you to find your place to increase your strength. Find your place to increase your strength. We should be moving from strength to strength. We should not be decreasing, but increasing in strength. We should be, uh, uh, we go through things but we keep moving and we grow through those things that we go through. We get stronger. When you rely upon the Lord, that is what will happen. There is an anointing in this month for looking and observing to find a place of improvement so your strength can manifest and increase. The month of ER is associated with your conscience which is linked with your thought processes and your emotions, your adrenal flow. This conscience is the what, what is considered the overlaying window or quote unquote I, all right, between your soul and spirit. Your conscience is the window, the gateway, the I between your soul and your spirit. Therefore, this is the month God wants you to cleanse your conscience. This is like what happens when you get a cut. You have an element in your blood that begins to create a mesh to coagulate the blood. If your conscience is not clean, a spiritual mesh will form that will then hinder the flow of the spirit, will hinder the wind, the current of his spirit. So to keep your conscious cleansed all year, 
the window of heaven, the window of your conscience must be aligned, must be cleansed, must be aligned. He can keep the window of heaven open. But if the window of your conscience, uh huh, which is heaven in you, <laughs> is not aligned, you will miss revelation. Not that God won't send it, but that filter, that mesh, you, you, you will miss the revelation. God wants to be sure that the window of your conscience is open and aligned. So when he begins to blow by his spirit, hallelujah, you don't miss what he is blowing into you and you are able to go with the blow. You are able to go with the flow, okay? Biblically, this is the month of natural healing. That's not the same as miracles, okay? God wants to permeate the body with natural healing. You do not need to strive for healing because remember, ER, this month is the name of God that is on this month is I am the Lord, your healer. So healing is, is right to manifest freely in this month. But like he said, if you listen to my voice, that's why you have to have that. You can't have, you have to have a cleansed conscience so you can hear his voice. He says, if you listen, I will heal you. I am the Lord, your healer. The Lord first manifested himself by this name when Israel had murmured and complained so much. So I thank you, Jesus, that our murmuring and complaining, though it is a sin, it will not stop him from, from doing, from blessing us. But we must understand that when we murmur and complain, we do open ourselves up for sickness. And, and guess what? <laughs> the resource says, and Satan schedules it on our calendar. My God, I need you to get this. When we, when we murmur and complain, we open ourselves up for sickness and Satan schedules it on our calendar. During the month of ER, you need to deal with your soul. That is your mind, your will, your emotions. Mm -mm -mm. Otherwise, you will be out of alignment for the rest of the year. This is the month God is permeating your mind. Your mind, like I said before, is not your brain. Your brain will resist your mind changing. If you have a wrong file in your brain, you will have to remove that file for your mind to think right. You will have to rebuke it. You'll have to cast down those arguments. You have to cast them out. Your mind is the thinking process of your heart. If your emotions are messed up, then you have feelings that are impregnating your thought processes. So these feelings will come in and bring seeds, will bring seeds. If your thinking processes aren't right, they, they, they bring out emotions and they'll just come back in and plant seeds. It's just a, it's just a cycle. If your thinking is not right, your emotions aren't right. If your emotions aren't right, your thinking is not right. They are intertwined. ER is the month of receiving spiritual advice. So we need to bind all of the diviners, uh huh, <laughs> the soothsayers, the false prophets, the false spirit of pro the prophetic, and ask the Lord to activate our prophetic voice. If we do not exercise our gift, 
the enemy will bring in a counterfeit, a false prophetic voice will corrupt the watchman. We need to advance during the watch in this month. So set your watching eye inward and outward. Since this is the Issachar month, you can understand seasons and mysteries and secrets will begin to be revealed to you. All right. So listen, God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for this teaching. Father God, we thank you for this teaching. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Mm. My prayer is that that we are really open and serious about cultivating an Issachar anointing. Mm -hmm. it's not enough for us to have knowledge of God understanding and wisdom and a prophetic voice and all of these things and not have timing right and not discerning and not really understanding the will of God in the moment mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I want you to prepare your hearts to receive this prayer. I'm going to pray. I've led to pray. This is a prayer for renewal of mind through release of revelation. I pray that your mind is renewed daily through daily release of, of revelation, impartation from Christ himself. But we understand for the this prayer to be answered, for this to happen, you have to seek God, as we said. It is the glory of God to conceal things, but it is the glory of kings to search things out. He needs to be the first the preeminent, the last, the foundation, the cornerstone, the covering, the flow. He needs to be all of what you are seeking. I'm not saying that you can't have natural understanding, but with all of thy getting around you, of, of the information that's flowing in from what's going on in the world, governments, what's going on around you, period. You want, we need to have an Issachar anointing, understanding of that so that we are not scattered, so that we are not overwhelmed, that we are not fearful, made anxious, that we are not lost and we are caught, that we are not causing others to be lost, that we aren't uh, uh, sharing rhetoric and in words and posting things and doing things and saying things and teaching things, praying and releasing and prophesying things that are out of season, things that are, are, are misinterpreted, things that cause people to, to go astray. We, listen, we know that this is the season for the uncommon to arise. And I believe that the Issachar, the sons of Issachar, they are uncommon. God is calling us, hallelujah, to bring the kingdom of heaven into the earth. So I pray 
for the renewal of your mind through the release of revelation that the spirit of Christ just abundantly impart to you revelation about your job, about your children, about your health, about your finances, about your ministry, whatever it is you're seeking him about. Revelation, revelation, revelation. So we can be lifted up out of those spaces and places that hinder us, that weaken us, that distract us. It's still our strength and our joy. Are y'all ready for this impartation? Know that everything that I'm going to say in this prayer has a scripture reference to it. I'm not praying and asking nothing that is not written in the word of God. They all have a scripture reference. I will not be speaking quoting the scripture, I will just be making the statement. Heavenly Father, your revealed will to your servant, the prophet Amos teaches us that surely the Lord God does nothing without revealing his plan to his servants, the prophets. He kande arabashi, he arobo sande kateye yaramasoya. We thank you, Father, for considering us uh, as your friends. He kashe yaramasi, where you desire to reveal the secrets of your heart and mind. He chando yarobo se. So now, God, we bow before you in all humility and all, Lord God, that you find us trustworthy as your friend to possess and even steward your spiritual intellectual property. May we be always found worthy by the help of your Holy Spirit to hold such revealed truths, ideas, and instructions that flow freely from your throne, God. Father, as your priest and apostle, I pray a special blessing upon us, your people who are called by your name. Father, bless us and anoint us, God, with an Issachar anointing, a special release of revelation that will remain with us throughout all seasons. Daniel 2.28 teaches us that you are a God that reveals a secret. Lord, reveal your secrets unto us, your servants, the prophets, prophetic ministers, and prophetic people. Reveal to us the secret and deep things, Lord God. Let us understand things kept secret from the foundation of the world, Lord God. Let the seals be broken from your word, God. Uh, let us understand and have revelation of your will and purpose for our lives and the lives of others. Give us the spirit of wisdom and revelation and let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened, God. Let us understand heavenly things he shall both say open our eyes to behold wondrous things out of your word god let us know and understand the mysteries of your kingdom god let us speak to others by revelation let the hidden things be made manifest Hide your truths from the wise and prudent and reveal them to us, your babes. Let your arm be revealed in our lives. Reveal the things that belong to us, God. Let your word be revealed unto us and your glory be revealed in our lives. Let your righteousness 
be revealed in our lives. Let us receive visions and revelations of the Lord. Let us receive an abundance of revelations. Let us be good stewards of your revelations, God. Let us speak the mystery of Christ. Let us receive and understand your hidden wisdom. Hide not your commandments from us, God. Let us speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Let us make known the mystery hey, of the gospel in power and demonstration. Make known unto us the mystery of your will. Open your dark sayings upon our hearts. Let us understand your parables, the words of the wise and their dark sayings. Lord, lighten our candles and enlighten our darkness. Make darkness light before us. Hey, again, I say, God, in every dark place, make darkness light before us. Give us the treasures of darkness and hidden riches. Hey, share about Sunday in secret places. Let your candles shine upon our heads. Our spirits are the candles of the Lord, searching all the inward parts and the belly. Let us understand the deep things of God. Let us understand your deep thoughts. Let our eyes be enlightened with your word. Bless Lord God right now, our eyes to see. And let us comprehend with all saints, what is the breadth and the length and the depth and the height of your love. Let our reigns instruct us in the night seasons and let us awaken with revelation. Remove all spiritual cataracts and scales from our eyes. In Jesus name I pray, hallelujah and amen. God, I thank you. Hallelujah. I receive it. I believe it. Hallelujah. We are increasing in an Issachar anointing. And we will do the work of protecting, guarding, and cultivating an Issachar anointing. Prophet Jerry, glory Amen. to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, um, I just want to just say that this is the word of prophecy that the Lord had that I just didn't, I didn't get the revelation, but it was in the word that you ministered to us. And of course, the prophecy that was given by Evangelist Sean, I, I witnessed that in my spirit, true to be so. But in the same instance, if anybody else can agree with me, come forth. Well, I believe that this is the pr prophetic word that God had that he didn't reveal this secret to his prophet because the prophet that would reveal the word already was going to give birth, had been given the word to, to us. And this is what the Lord has revealed to me that is happening in the now and that we are shit 
Tabasi. We can have an expectation and trust and believe that his word is true. And I think I'm frozen. <laughs> I think you were I'm for a, you were for a minute, but we but can hear yes, you now. Praise God, uh, Apostle, and um, and I just thank God for how He revealed His secret things through us all that have the propensity to. Okay, cool. But yes, yes the word has been the word has been given, and I am so. Uh, um, displeased with what God has shown me as you ministered the word. Because like I say, there was, there was something in the atmosphere that I couldn't put my finger on. And this is it. He revealed it through you and, uh, and evangelist showing. So praise God for y'all the prophetic anointing. And, and that goes to show that just because there's a, 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 a prophetic title, that don't necessarily mean that anybody else cannot prophesy. Because right. the word of God said, I wish that all men shall prophesy, you know? So, uh, yes. praise God. Rabbi, Rabbi that, that, was, um, that was an amazing, awesome teaching, Apostle. And, and I am so just excited about what God is revealing to us about the season that we're in. And just knowing that this month that's coming is a month of giving. And, and like I said, that, that, it was just something that was so stirred in my spirit about us that I just couldn't get in. And I just thank God for you. That you revealed that thing that God has for us, because I know it was something great. <laughs> Praise God. Praise, Praise God. God. Thank and, you. And I'm, I'm grateful. I'm uh, grateful for your prophetic God. covering. Your prophetic so covering. Pleased. Praise God. I'm done. Your prophetic covering, man of God. You know, uh, we're a prophetic house. So you know, we are. We're legal. We're in order. You know, we have the gifts in the house in operation. We have a prophet to cover. And the, one of the, uh, uh, the roles of a prophet in the office of a prophet is to confirm the word of the Lord. Doesn't mean that he has to be the one that's always bringing the word of the Lord, but to, to confirm that that is an authentic word from God. And so we are grateful, prophets. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just know that the Lord is pleased with the prophetic word that has come forward from Evangelist Sean as well as your apostle, because just like I said, it was, he was speaking of our wealth. Mm -hmm. as well as the wisdom and the knowledge of understanding. And, and you all brought that to the forefront. It's just confirmation mm -hmm. and affirmation of what the Lord is doing. Praise and not only through his prophet, but through his prophetic and anointed men and women of God. So mm -hmm. praise mm -hmm. God. Praise right. God. I'm so, I'm so pleased and happy to be a part of this house. No, Amen. right? Yeah. <laughs> Me too, me too. I am too. And I was just, I'm just looking in the uh, chat and I see like Evangelist Valerie was saying that this was confirmation. You know, people are saying that the word is, is confirmation. So if anyone wants to come on through here, y'all know what we do. Um, we just give God the glory and we share whatever confirmation, um, whatever added layers of revelation God may have given you. Uh, Come on here, Elder Joanne. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I just want to say, I want to just thank and praise God for this message. I mean, it is profound. It is, it is just so enlightening. And I'm going to tell you that last week on Thursday, I injured myself and I injured my neck. I thought I was going to have a stroke. I, I mean, it was painful. It was, and I'm a, I can tolerate pain. But this was hollering pain. So praise be to God. I had to go on somebody. I needed to go with someone on Sunday. I had an assignment on Sunday. But anyway, I, I told him, I said, I'll call you in the morning and let you know if I can go with you. And it was, you know, to the church. And um, praise God. Uh, I went on Saturday and they uh, gave me a shot of Termidor. So I was good. I was good for Sunday. But in the meantime, 
I couldn't get my medication, you know, because I was drugstores are closed on a, on the weekend. So anyway, anyway, praise God, uh, the pain came back, and it still was excruciating. Anytime I did any kind of lifting or anything, it was there. And you know what happens with pain? Sometimes you just constantly on, you know, concentrating on that or, or concentrating on getting rid of it. And then plus, I was taking the wrong. I was taking things that inflamed it even more, you know, over the counter. Mm. And so anyway, so I had to go back. Uh, what was it? Yesterday. But the point I'm making, I went back yesterday. But the point I'm making is that on Sunday, 515, I was saying to the Lord, I was saying, Lord, okay, you know, because I'm still, you know, going through, growing through, excuse me, uh, uh, Dr. Tilisha, <laughs> I'm growing through <laughs> I'm growing through, and uh, he, the Lord gave me my, the ministry, seeking the kingdom, the teacher on seeking the kingdom. That's exactly what he took, told me, the, and, and he, he gave me um, Matthew six thirty three, and uh, praise God, and and I mean this is just just totally open up, open up, and confirmed. Oh my God, I thank you. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Mm -hmm. God, I thank you. It's just open up and confirm what he was saying, praise God, and what he was revealing unto me. And I thank God because, uh, like you said, the revelation, the re God revealing himself, revealing his kingdom here on earth. And 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 I'm, I'm like, oh, my God. I said, okay, Lord, I hear you. I'm listening because what happened is I got not only was I sick in 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 you know with that pain I was also sick in my stomach I was sick in my body my my, my legs are swollen you know uh, triple their size and and I mean you know all all of this body attack body attacks right and praise God you, can't, you know what I mean you come and you and these are just distractions to try to keep my mind off of the things of God. And I thank and praise God because as you came forth with the word, I mean it is awesome. The word is awesome. The the, the just the uh just the uh the blessing, the it's a called blessing, the, the anointing, and you know, just giving giving us detail for detail on what we need to do and how to accomplish that in God, you know, and I and and, and, and talking about he supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. I mean, in Christ Jesus, this is this is what He's doing, supplying every need, every every. I mean, I have to forget about my body. I have to forget about my uh, 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 my uh, um, uh, uh, physical and my and my um, and my uh, you know my uh, carnal body, my carnal mind. I have to forget all of that. I have to continue to test for that mental reset that mental reset in Christ Jesus. And I thank and praise God because this is this has just helped me a whole lot. This is just mm -hmm. open up some doors and open up some more understanding as to how great our God is mm -hmm. and how he's so much concerned about us, you know, and that he supply each and everything that we need, ideas. You know, like you said, you even spoke about uh, it's the time for even your, uh, uh, your business, you know, your entrepreneurship, uh, your ministry, your children. I mean, every aspect. And I noticed too about when you when you had said something about the uh, in the beginning when you said uh, about this is the uh, this is the month for oh for the tribe and for the constellation, you know, for the science, for the science, for the for the elements. You know, you covered the elements, you know, that God has created. In this earth, mm -hmm. and I said, "Wow, those are the elements that, that she's that was God's created." So He's covering all those things in this month of Issachar, and I thank mm -hmm. God that. Uh, and, and you gave the reasons for the stars. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they want to separate uh, everything that's natural and that is soup that is a uh, 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 in the constellations away from God. But God created it all, and I mm -hmm. thank and praise God for that. Mm -hmm. And He that. He has created in me a, 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 a zeal to mm. just keep, to continue. Glory. Hallelujah. To continue 
Oh my God, to move and in, 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 in have my being. And I love the word, I love that word permeate. I love that word, you know, because it, it, you do need to be saturated in the spirit of God, saturated in his ways and his, his ideas and his heart and his mind. And I thank and praise God that I know that I need to, uh, you know, just grab a hold of this and run with it and don't let no of it. I thank God for it. I thank God for you, uh, Apostle. I thank God for Prophet. I thank God for everyone that's on this call. I thank God that for the listening audience, because see, this teaching is not just, uh, uh, you know, I just picked it out of a book. This is, this teaching is, uh, this teaching is a revelated teaching. This teaching actually comes, oh my God, from the throne of grace. Hallelujah. In favor. Oh my God. Glory. I thank God for it. It's a, oh, I, I, it is a, it's not just teaching. Oh my God, that you're going to put on the shelf. It's not mm. just teaching. You're going to forget about tomorrow. But this mm. is teaching that, hallelujah, mm. definitely can move your life forward. Hallelujah. That will advance us into the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. And everything around us, hallelujah, would have to start falling down. Hallelujah. And bowing to the spirit of yes, the most God. high God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of oh, Jesus. Oh, God, I praise Glory. you. Hallelujah. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, Elder Joanne, thank you so much. It's so good to hear your voice. So glad to know that this teaching has just blessed you. You know, like I had said on the in the room um, that, you know, I want y'all to come ready. I need you to bring your appetite. Okay. I need you to bring your appetite. Um, and to expect, you know, teaching, direction, clarification on things, correction. And yes, you know, anybody listening, the, my main reason that I want people to understand, I don't look at no Zodiac. I don't look at no horoscope. I don't look at none of that stuff because that stuff has been tainted with the world and some extra stuff. These, the signs that God has put out there are servants, okay? And they bring a clue. That's all they do. They bring a clue. <laughs> But the answer, the solution, the instructions come from the mouth of God himself. They are just like anything else, a pain in your body. We don't worship it and submit to it, but it's a clue, okay, that there could be something somewhere that needs to be addressed, all right? And so, woman of God, I'm so grateful that your faith is intact, um, but I want to encourage you, you know, you don't have to suffer in your body and you and I don't, God doesn't want you to ignore your body just like he doesn't want us to ignore the stars he doesn't want us to ignore that you know this is the season where the bull is probably because there's a clue there for us there's a there's a nugget all right but we take it back to him and say God what does this mean <laughs> okay and so you don't ignore your body but you lay it at the foot of the cross and you say God what does this mean what what do I need to address what, where's the wisdom? What is it that I need to do? Because I don't want to be in bondage to this pain. I don't want to be in bondage and in fear and anxiety of thinking wrongly about it. Oh, does this mean that I'm going to be crippled? Oh, da, da. You know how our mind can just take us, because we already talked about, okay, the complex beliefs that we have. But you got to submit it to God to get instruction. But when you were speaking, I, I believe that um, the core part of your issue is a back issue. I was just hearing while you were speaking, there's something, it's a spinal issue, like the fall, something, you, you may need to see a chiropractor or something to come in and physically reset, all right? But but if that core in you is off, if it gets off just a, just a little bit, that's your information highway. Your spine is your information highway. It'll, you can have uh, nausea, you can have headaches, you have all different kinds of things. So we want you to, to make sure that you're healthy as, as the word has gone forward. Uh, Evangelist uh, Leslie, this is a season to be strong, okay? Or whoever it was that was speaking to, I think it was Leslie speaking to like the Brea and all of us, this is a season to be strong in our body. And this is a season where we can receive uh, the revelation and impartation of the revelation of Christ as Jehovah Rapha our healer. So he's, I'm believing God. Yeah, not my shame. 
and somebody else may have a word of instruction for the woman of God, he says, if you listen to my voice, I will heal you. <laughs> but you, the healing comes in you, you, you trusting and believing. So even if the voice just says, believe, and you receive that word, believe, God's going to heal you. But if the instruction is go see, uh-huh, just like Christ told Paul, you go, get your blind tail up off of the road from Damascus <laughs> and go to this house and, and wait for Ananias, I think it was, to come and open your eyes again. So sometimes we there's some other things that we have to do. But the thing is, is to follow the voice of the Lord. But I pray right now, hallelujah, God, for you just to have mercy and to bring a fresh, uh, a fresh strength and comfort to the woman of God's body. God, I ask you to relieve her pain uh, in degrees, a great degrees, and bring it down to the lowest uh, common uh, 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 the pain, Lord God, enough to remind her that she needs to address some things, hey, shut up, but not enough to distract her and to debilitate her, but enough just to just to bring her into that place that you would have her, that place of strength, that place of knowing you as Jehovah Rapha hey, in this season of her life, God. But I'm asking you, God, just to give her revelation, instruction, and wisdom on how she is to proceed, God. I ask you for healing, healing to be her portion in this month, Lord God. Let her not just be healed in these places where she is aching, Lord God, but total and complete healing, God, so she can be a sign and a wonder. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Come on, Dr. Johnson, I know you wanna say something. <laughs> Yeah, you really just prayed it. Um, I was really, um, Elder Jojo, I was, the whole time you were speaking, um, I was just praying for just a, a supernatural healing in your, in your body for God to prove himself and to reveal to you his healing power. And, and it's, it's, it, and I'm not saying he doesn't use pills. I'm not saying that he doesn't use the doctors. I'm not saying that. And, and I know that that is instruction from the Lord for you to go in and get that, you know, your back, your spine, that area check, you know, uh, but I believe in just what was spoken um, because the, the part I was, one of the parts I was going to speak on regarding apostles message was um, about the, the experiential revelation. And it was something that Leslie and I were just talking about even a, a few days ago and how God uh, reveals himself to us. God reveals himself to us in uh, experientially is when we receive that revelation knowledge, okay? So we can, we can yes, we are overcomers by the blood of the lamb in the word of whose testimony, our testimony. And so it, it is, it, it is this test that you have to, because I can listen to other people's testimony all day long, you know, but, you know, and we can speak to what we know that the word says, you know, yes, Jesus loves me. This I know, but until you experience until you experience the level of love, until you experience the peace, until you experience the joy and the healing in your body and your mind, until you experience, and, and it's not that you haven't experienced these things in the past. This is what what um, what Leslie and I were talking about is that there, there are dimensions of revelation. There's dimensions of it that, that reveals another aspect or another dimension of that same characteristic of God, right? Because we've been healed before. We've been, you know, he, he's provided for us before, but, but to, to grow that faith and to, to come up another level, you might've believed him for, for a toe before, right? But now you got to believe him for a neck. You see what I'm saying? You got to believe him for, you know, some, some larger things. Okay. And, and that grows, that, that grows your faith. Cause that's the thing, right? We go from faith to faith. 
and from glory to glory. And so that experiential revelation is, un is undeniable. And so I'm just, I'm just praying, I'm praying for you that you will receive that and that he will begin to even speak to you about some of the preventative measures that you can begin to take some things that you can do in order to, to help in, in alleviate pressure in your body. So, um, I, you know, I will continue to pray. Um, but Apostle, I'm, I'm going to tell you that word, that message. <laughs> That's why I say you speak in my language because you, you like, I mean, you just done went up like a whole nother level on this teaching thing. Like you just Boom, 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 bat, bat, bat. I mean, that's all I saw. That's all I saw going off. I mean, it, it was just, it was just absolutely um life changing. It was absolutely everything that I needed, you know, because I do, being in complete transparency, I do struggle in my emotions. I do. I do. And 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 that's, you know, that's the realm of my of my biggest fight because I know what's going on spiritually. I know what's going on mentally. You know what I'm saying? I know, but it's, it's, it's bringing all of the emotion under subjection to the spirit of God that I don't have behaviors that follow emotion. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? So when you, so when you look at that, when you look at that, you have to be able to, to look at that also from an intellectual, right? The mind, the will, the emotions, the intellect in, in bringing all of that into alignment, all of that. And I truly believe that it is, it really is the revelation. And, and when you get it, you get it. Cause you could preach it, you could talk it, you could do all of those things, but until you, you receive, truly, truly receive the, the, the revelation that that is the experience with the word that is the word made flesh. <laughs> Can't nobody tell me that God don't give you peace that surpasses all understanding. I'm the word made flesh. So it, it, it surpasses all understanding that I have peace <laughs> concerning my son. You know what I mean? So that's, that is that's a you know so so we gotta look at that when we when we look at the word and and we're not all you know Jesus was the only one word made flesh I ain't even trying to be that poster board you know what I mean Job Job was manifesting you know it, he he manifested a lot of you know re restoration and a lot of rev, uh, experiential revelation you know um because he went through all of those things. You know what I mean? And so we have to look at it. And I love how you just stirred up our thirst for the revelation, how you just, you, you steered that thing up, you know, to the point where this is, you know, look for more, you know, cause we're all, you know, we're all word lovers. We're all meat eaters. You know, we meet, we, we eat at a, at a high level in the word of God. We know how to study. We know how to, you know, plow through the word and all of that. But, but are you receiving that next level of revelation? Are you digging for that next level of revelation? And that, so that's, that has me stirred up. I'm telling you, it has me completely stirred up. So I bless God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, if we can get the doc stirred up. <laughs> Woo! These heavy eaters, boy, y'all. Y'all, y'all keep me in them trenches, boy. Come through here, Evangelist Sean. <laughs> I saw you came off mic. Evangelist Sean, did you want to say something? You came off mute. Okay, that might be a mistake. All right. Anyone else want to share anything? Of course. Of course. Yes. <laughs> yes. Listen. Mm-mm-mm. My God, what a word. Hallelujah. What, hello, can y'all hear me? Yes, ma'am. Listen, y'all, boy, when we come, when, woo, listen, I, I have, I, I, 
I'm not gonna say I feel sorry for y'all preaching this month, but I just know how I just know y'all are y'all are audience for y'all to come hungry. And come so on. God, but God, you know what? Come when on. we know who we're ministering to and we just lay it, you know, we just allow God just to speak through us, we can prepare what the people need. And so I'm grateful that y'all put a demand on the anointing in this house because woman of God. When I was, woo, and God was giving me this stuff, I was like, oh, Jesus, I hope they show up for this meal because I don't want nobody to not get fed today. I'm glad you were here, woman of God. Yes, and it was, yes, it was, yes. Thanks for the message. Yeah, it was a a meal and more. I'm telling you, it was a meal and more. I'm telling you. And Elder JoJo, I am lifting you up with much prayer, woman of God. Yes, with much prayer. uh, prayer and you know it was just so funny you know um I have well, I got some notes everywhere you know um you were saying that this was um you know um the enemy you know uh trying to you know distract you to get you off your um your, your you know your assignment and when you were talking about you know I believe she um got injured from a fall I think was it a fall or something uh, that she got injured uh, from, you know, you were talking about how your legs was swollen and, and you know, all them, uh, all other things, you know, happened, um, you know, from the fall. And I was thinking, you know, possibly before you said it, I was like, it seems like something is um, out of alignment there. Uh, you know what I'm saying? And I'm saying this fall may have uh, occurred and uh, allowed other things to be revealed that need to be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that part there that need to be uh, looked at also, because I think you said somewhere possibly you say where, you know, our vision must be clear and aligned to receive the revelation of God. And this has taken her, you know, uh, this, this has caused her, like she said, to be, you know, be uh, trying to get her to become um, uh, distracted, you know, for what God has called her to do she was just talking about you know so you would say you know we got to stay in alignment and that uh, uh um uh that revelation god mm, mm, mm. And, no you said it was a time of radiance and you know and god had been uh you know uh dealing with me downloading with me about our uh, light you know and we uh he was downloading me you know uh telling me you know light you know reveals darkness how light reveals darkness you know how light illuminates you know how light overcomes uh uh darkness how it defeat uh darkness uh how light pierces darkness how it penetrates darkness i got oh jesus hallelujah and seeing that's what you know that's why as uh, uh, uh you know the light god has given us you know everywhere where there is our, our, our darkness our light should reveal the darkness our light should uh, illuminate that darkness come on here that it cannot be here you understand oh my god hallelujah and I had, and then you was talking about uh, uh, understand the time and uh, uh, you know understand secrets uh, and you know increasing um, our revelation. It uh, took me back to uh, Jeremiah thirty three and three. I love this scripture. I love this scripture. And the message it says, "Call to me, and I will answer you. I'll tell you marvelous and wonderful things that you could never figure out on your own." After the power of the Holy Ghost, I shut get it up, up God. Hallelujah. He said that you will have you what you can never figure out on your own unless you seek my face, unless you call on me. I got listen, listen. And I'm gonna finish. And I had listen, I had a dream. I had a dream. God used the works uh he speaks to me through uh dreams where I was in um uh, this uh uh it was like a compound, it was like a, a compound, this place, and it was uh it was people. I, I didn't know the people who these people were and stuff, and I began to uh and I began to uh explore this compound, and as I began to explore, uh God began to tell me he said things are not what they seem. Hallelujah. And when he said that apostle, listen, uh, uh, people, he began to reveal and uncover people. People begin to transform into witches and warlocks and demons and devils. And I was like, oh my God. And I went back uh, 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 to the people. I went back to the people that was in the compound and I began to say, we got to get out of here. This place is not right. These people are not right. And I was like, God, and I told somebody, I say, this is the time that God 
is getting ready to reveal, uncover some things that are hidden, those secret things, those mysteries that we listen. Oh my God, hallelujah. That we need to be able to discern. That's why discernment is so important. Oh my God, come out here. Yes. So yeah, so so this was uh yeah, this was right on time, especially, you know, and I you know, and I said revelation meaning, you know, that we are going to see things more clearly. Our vision will uh 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 you know, our vision will no longer be uh be blurred. We will see clearly. Uh so, um, wow. Yeah, wow. <laughs> thank you, Evangelist Valerie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Yeah, this is the season he's going to be uncovering. He wants us to see clearly who it is around us, the devils around us and um, the saints around us. We've discounted some people that are really a blessing from God. And like I was mentioning earlier, uh, I, I don't want to no longer a blaspheme God, so to speak, by assigning something to something that is incorrect. We must have the eyes like, we we need this Issachar anointing. We need the Issachar anointing so we will no longer squander these opportunities that God has before us. Come on through here, Evangelist Sean. Mm, mm, mm. I have to jump in here. Oh my goodness, yo, I'm just, can y'all hear me? Yes, were you able to, were you able to continue to listen to the message? I know you had to step yes. out. Okay. I was in the car, you know, I picked up uh, John's girlfriend. Amen. Okay, all right, all right. <laughs> I'm, okay. I'm pivoting, okay, I'm pivoting. But anyway, um, what a message. And now I understand, like, even as far as wisdom, like our timing, okay? Remember, because we've been kind of, you know, pacing it and pacing, you know, kind of getting the groundwork. But last week, during this month of Instacart, ah, woo, ah, we started. Like, we, you know, and, and, and oh, my goodness, what a... It's just so awesome just to know that we are all following the voice of the Holy Spirit. That is one voice that is he's speaking to all of us and he's confirming his word with signs and wonders that will follow. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just excited about Apostle. I'm telling you, I need those 26 pages, uh, praise the Lord, of the helmet of salvation. <laughs> I'ma need that. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. But um, but you know, and even as we go through the soul work, you know, I was even thinking about inserting, you know, the helmet of salvation teaching, just so people can have a way to, you know, have you know, grasp and understand. Because it's time. It's time that we deal with these faulty belief systems. You know, it's time, and God is, is looking for us to do the work, mm -hmm. because we got to do our own work. We got our own, I can't, I can't say, oh, oh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Johnson, you need to, do, uh, uh no, 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 uh, Apostle, no, no, you need to, no, no, Larry, you need to, no, no, it's so, sure, it's me, what, what do I need to do, you know, and this is just, revo it was revolutionary, it's a paradigm shifting. It, you know, we're in that season. I love that. And I kind of I kind of see it as the middle. You know, the middle. Like Instacart is the middle. You it know, is. because you're not, yeah, it's, it's, you're not in Egypt, but you're not in your promise yet. You're right in the middle. Mm -hmm. And what we do with our middle mm -hmm. is that's going to dictate the level of promise we're going to walk into. Come on. Now, are you are you going to have a kindergarten promise or are you going to have a doctorate promise? Okay? Now you can walk in the promise, but the level of work that you do in the middle will dictate your level of promise to the next level. You know what I mean? Now maybe you know you want a little Corolla promise. Maybe God wants to give you a Bentley. You know what I mean? But if you don't do the work, 
you want, I'm just using that for them, but I'm just, that's the vast, you know, you know, the vastness of the promise. You know, oh, I'm, I'm living in my promise, but what level, at what level? You know, I want the highest level that God has for me. I want the highest level that God has for CEK, for all of us. Right. You know, the highest level of promise, but we got to do the work in the middle. So this is, oh, thank you, Apostle, just for, you know, just being committed to the word and, mm. and committed to loving people. Mm. Mm-mm. And I feel your love. I want you to know I feel the love. I really do. And that, to be very honest with you, that was, that was your, the love that you, have, you and Prophet have was one of the main drawing cards. Amen. That I experienced as my as I transitioned. Mm. I'm gonna tell you, it was the love. It was the love that drew me. Amen. So I, I'm, you know, I'm mm. waiting for that. Right. I love you. We love you too, and you and and I'm glad that you caught that about Issachar. It is that connection. It's the connecting link. It's the connecting it's the pen. Connection. And, and you yeah. hit the nail on the head with that middle ground. Dr. Johnson did a message on that years ago about the middle ground, honey. It's in that middle ground. <laughs> Woo! My God. So it's the work that we do in this month. That's why I want to make sure it, it, this, this is the pivotal month that sets the uh, rest. And, and, I, and I'm so grateful that you, God, put it in your spirit to really bring forth the soul work teaching and it started, you know, because it was those two weeks with Tylisha. So it, she opened, it opened up the month of Issachar. And because uh, we're in alignment, we're just, we're in alignment. The ministry and the people in the ministry, we are in alignment, not just with Holy Spirit, but with one another. And that's part of team being in alignment. I just, yeah, it's so much, it's so much. Woo, come on through here, evangelist. Uh, the Braham, woman of God. You wanted to hop off earlier, but I want to go ahead and let Sean come in because I saw her in the car. I didn't know she had to get out the car. And Regis and Melissa, anyone else that wants to share. But come on through, evangelist to I already knew it was going to be a sh- That's why I warned y'all to come ready. <laughs> we was going to have to stretch out this Sunday. The rest of the Sundays, we may not stretch out like this, but we was going to stretch out. Because I had a lot that God had a lot he needed to say. Yeah. Well, first of all, I do touch and agree with the prayers that's gonna gonna embrace complete healing, restoration in every area of your body, Elder Joanne. Um, you're already healed. And um like you had shared with me, so you know, earlier, you know how you was feeling. But God is good. Um, apostle, I'm glad that we have a new apostle, if anybody doesn't know. Let me introduce her to you. <laughs> wow. I mean, the level. I mean, you, you're teaching and you, all the lessons that everyone brings is always, always, always powerful and anointed. This is a whole different a level of teaching that I've seen you, uh, the way it came through today. And I truly thank God for that. I do, I do, I do, I do. And it's like, if I could just sum it all up real quick in three words, it's like, raise the bar. Raise the bar of your expectation. Raise your bar of your mental state. Raise your bar of how you see. Just raise yourself up. Bottom line. The day, and then you're saying like, this is a 21st day. God loves us so much that he's saying, no, no, no. You guys are not going to miss it. You're, gonna, you're not going to miss it. And as you know, I kind of followed the months, uh, you know, in the Hebrew calendar. So when you was bringing it, it was like, wow, yes. yes yeah. I mean, you know, I get all excited. But, um, wow, man. The, I thought about wisdom, and this is, I thought about the wise men. We have to truly discern the time. And it has to be like intravenous in our veins, you know, wisdom on one side. And, you know, you got to get it into your very fiber, your, your very 
I mean, when you raise up, you got to, you got to feel it on the inside that you got it. It's not somebody saying, yeah, okay, you got, no, you got to know that you know that you know that you know. And then you go on communicating, communicating with truth to the mind of man. I was like, wow. We need the revelation of God truly, that is truly now, not half standing, that is truly is in our life. And that's a question that you can answer. You have to, to me, this whole lesson, like I said, besides raising the bar, it was like, come out of the picture, take inventory on yourself. We still got some more days. Utilize every day, every minute, so then when you go, so that it would carry over. I looked at it, it was carry over to the rest of my life. And it's going to go from generation to generation. I'm not leaving nobody behind. That's the bottom line of things. The other thing is, the other thing was you must purposely become aware of your thought pattern. You know, purposely think about it, you know. Look at the end of the day. It's like, okay, you know, how could I handle this? Could this, you know, God was it please. And if you get in tune with this, I really feel in my spirit, you get in tune with it, it's going to become like second nature. It's just going to flow. It's just going to flow. It won't be like, uh, maybe I should. If we, as we come up higher, God did not give this to apostle, gets to give it to him to bring it. This is a thing. This is where he wants us to come, where he wants us to go, where he wants us to live, move, and have our being in him. Your mental set is constructed and it must be organized. Then I said, hmm, what type of character are you showing to others? But most of all, what type of character are you showing to yourself? Find your place to increase your depth, uh, to increase your strength, improvement daily, daily, daily. Clean your conscience, if not properly cleans, it's what's gonna happen. You build up scar tissues and it will not heal when you have scar tissue. Then they have to go back in and dig it out. You don't wanna go through that. Go through it the first time. Premiate the body with natural healing. And if you listen, he said, I will heal you. And I love this part when you said murmuring, complaining, opens up sicknesses and disease and everything that is not of God. And you can't, you know, put a zip on it. Just shut your mouth. It's easier. This way you don't open it up. Nothing can go in. <laughs> and last was spiritual advancement is in this month. Timing is everything through the eyes of God. I love it. Thank you, Apostle. Mm -mm. amen amen i'm glad you know that was caught that piece about the murmuring and complaining the word of god tells us that a man's not defiled by what goes in his mouth but he's defiled by what comes out and so we defile our temple when we murmur and complain um we set ourselves up for disease and sicknesses and stuff for for this this for satan to schedule our uh affliction and the devil is a liar I'm not going to allow, I'm not, yeah, I got to watch my mouth so that the devil don't be scheduling afflictions and stuff because of murmuring and complaining. Oh my goodness. I'm so grateful to God. I'm so grateful to God. Anyone else want to share anything uh, before we close out? You know, I'm just, I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. I'm full. Glory to God, Hallelujah! I thank each and every. I'm just going to say that um, I, you know, I'm I'm afraid to even open up my mouth because I I feel like we could just do a whole pe preach fest right here and and go right on into wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> but people got to eat, take a nap, and all that yes, kind of child. Stuff before <laughs> wisdom. So I ain't gonna say nothing, but it was mm -mm good. And I'm telling you, to God be the glory, to God be the glory, Apostle. It, it just, it just blessed my soul. Oh uh, well, you can close us out with a quick prayer, woman of God, because I did pray for the, um, you know, the release of renewal of mind through release of revelation. But you could just close us out in prayer, basically. And I just thank God that y'all, that y'all love 
us, we love y'all, but you love me and profit and that you um, make space for us and you allow us to minister and to be used by God the way that God would have us to be used. Mm-hmm. Um, we, we are not restricted to 20 hot minutes and then you're out, you know, but y'all are not no 20 hot minute eaters anyway. Mm-hmm. But the good thing about it is if your schedule makes it where you only got 20 hot minutes, you can come and eat for 20 hot minutes and catch the, catch, get the leftovers. <laughs> get the replay. Because, yes, the get the replay. And so, the replay. Mm-hmm. But I already knew it was going to be, and I said, Lord, but I felt good about it. I felt like, you know, y'all would receive it. So I'm grateful I that mean, you, you received it. You sit and watch a movie God. for two hours, so it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? I don't even... I don't pay that. You know me. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, that's, that's how out. we think about it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name. We give you honor and glory. Father, we receive first and foremost every single word, Lord God, that has been spoken, oh God. We receive it, Lord God, in our spirit, Lord God, in the spirit of our mind, Father, that it, you have enlightened our understanding, Lord God. You have illuminated, Lord God, so many things, Lord God, in, in, in our knowledge, Lord God, and in, in our understanding, Lord God, that is opening up the door, Lord God, for your revelation, Lord God, to come in, to flood in, that there be no hindrance, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, and I praise you, Lord God, that each and every vessel that is on this line, Lord God, and that will listen, Lord God, even to the replay, that Father God, that they, Lord God, and that we, Lord God, will be able to chew on this word, Lord God, that we may be able, Lord God, to to truly walk in, Lord God, to receive it, to cultivate it, Lord God, that we have the Issachar anointing, Lord God. I thank you and I praise you, Lord God, that we can walk in it. Because like Evangelist the Brea said, hallelujah, it's an overflow. It's a continuum. It is something that, yes, we need to catch it now, but it is something that will flow, hallelujah, in our lives, that there will be no stop. There will be no loss of momentum. There will be nothing, Lord God. But Father God, that this Lord God will just flow and it will continue continue, Lord. I thank you, Lord God, that you have created, Lord God, this space of grace, Lord God, that Father God, that we can come Lord God, and and learn, Lord God, of your word, that we can come and eat from your table, Lord God, and know, Lord God, that it is sound doctrine. Know, hallelujah, that it is word from the throne. Know, Lord God, hallelujah, that it came from Holy Spirit, Lord God himself. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for the leaders, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for refreshing and refilling, Lord God, Apostle of everything, Lord God, that she has poured out on today, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God, that that it's easy, (laughs) that the anointing sets on her and rests on her, that makes preaching and teaching easy. So Father, I thank you that she simply opens up her mouth, Lord God, and that she, she is Uh, is able to speak what you have already given her, Lord God, and and how she has studied, Lord God. It's not that she hasn't worked for this word, but Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that giving it out, Lord God, comes easy. I thank you, Lord God, that the gift, Lord God, of teaching, I thank you, Lord God, that it has elevated to a whole nother level. I bless your name, Lord God, for all, Lord God, that you have done, all that you are doing, Lord God, and for all that you are about to do, and that everybody that is connected to us, Lord God, that we are able to pray that they are able to receive and position themselves and reposition, Lord God, themselves to to get, Lord God, what what it is that we have received, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Don't forget cekministries.com for your donations. Um, Cash cash app is cekministries, dollar sign cekministries. We don't want to forget our tithes and our offering at this word. Bless you, you're not a you're not a member of this ministry. Then please uh, leave an offer and put a seed on the word that you will receive uh, your blessing. It just seals it to the next level. And so thank you so much for your for your giving. Because listen, where you eat and where you get fed, you need to make sure that you are that you are planting seed okay, in the ground and seal that thing up. Mm-hmm. And so uh, we, we thank you so much for tuning in. Please share this out. Sharing is caring. Uh, we don't want to keep stuff to ourselves. That's, that's just being selfish and stingy. And so please share this out. And we want to make sure that we are a blessing uh, to others. And as we go and grow in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so thank you again for tuning in to CEK Ministries. Stay tuned because there is more to come. Don't forget Thursday night Bible study. 
don't forget it okay do not forget it because there is there is truly truly sound teaching that is going on and on all the platforms that you can think of um we are there and so you follow apostle marguerite isaac uh, for all of the platforms that she has uh out there you want to make sure that you are um on daughters of deborah because there's things coming up for that so listen stay tuned stay plugged in Okay, because we are going to another level, another dimension in God, and you don't want to miss out. I ain't saying that other people ain't doing things, but we know what God is doing here. That's and right. so you don't want to miss out in Jesus' name. Thank you Blessing so him. much, Dr. Yeah. Johnson. Thank you so much for closing us out with that prayer and those last minute things. And, and you hit the nail on the head, I was going to say you know, put a seed on that word, you know, yeah. put a seed on that word, CEK Ministries. If you want to sow into my life directly and bless me, we receive that as well. Yeah. But put a seed on that word and prepare yourself for this Thursday's Faith Essentials. I, uh, this Thursday is actually Ascension Thursday. This is the day that Christ ascended and went on into heaven. And so I uh, do, do believe I have an idea that the Lord is going to have me start doing a comprehensive revolutionary teaching on the tribe unity of God, not the Trinity, the tri-unity of God. And so um, it's going to be something else. And so y'all join me Thursday and uh, next Sunday, we will kick off um, we will have a pre-birthday month uh, uh, service, and that's going to be our very own minister, Dallas Cohen. She, Y'all know how she get down now. We all know how everybody gets down, so you want to make sure you're front and center next Sunday to hear what the Lord is going to speak through this woman of God. And each Sunday after that, we're going to hear from our different team ministry leaders, and God is going to use them all mightily. So stay tuned. I love you all. God bless you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Blessings and peace. Blessings. Blessings.